Welcome back YouTube. This is Dave Lucas with Injection Molding Skills and More. Today we're going to go over end of arm tooling. Um, so E-O-A-T. That's what everybody calls it. Um, so we're going to go over that. We're going to go over the different companies. So you got EMI, ASS, FIPA. You have all these other different uh, brands that are out there. But I'm going to show you guys like a little video of EMI's robot thing um and then i'll probably show you a couple other videos maybe inside that video um and then i'm going to show you an end arm that i built here and show you a couple little things that go along with the end arm tooling uh end arm toolings are very high tech you can have them do coating you can have them do uh laser um scribing like inkjet you can have them do labeling you can have them do almost anything you want them to do if you have the applications to do it so again this video will go over into arm tooling and it'll dive into all the suction cups stuff like that okay so st stick along or ugh, stay tuned in and watch the video Thank Okay. The first step in preparing to build an end of arm tool is to look at the details on the back surface of the part. They will show you the direction of the die and the direction the part is to mold it. Notice the straight ribs run in this direction, meaning the part will come out of the mold like this. file frame holding the vacuum cups will be bolted to the dovetail plate, which will then be attached to the robot. This end of arm tool includes three profile frame pieces, two horizontal and one vertical.
frame connectors mount in the profile channel. They allow for the horizontal framework to be added to the vertical framework. is that the profile can move in two different directions. At this point, the basic frame profile is completed. Before you start adding components, you want to check the position of the profile in relation to the tool. With this particular tool, we will add three vacuum cups. This type of vacuum cup arm is spring-loaded, which allows the cup to approach the part straight on, even though the part is at an angle. If the part is angled, the cup will adjust to the position of the part. This type of clamp is adjustable along the length of the profile, the distance away from the profile, and the angle of rotation. We now have a basic three cup end of arm tool. Remember, with any flat surface, you need a minimum of three contact points to have a stable support system for the part. The vacuum cups are now aligned with the part. On this particular part, there is also a sprue attached to the gate within this hole. A sprue plier will secure the sprue along with the runner on the bottom edge of the opening. This mounting clamp holds the sprue plier. not only to secure the part, but also to remove the sprue. You may need to adjust the sprue plier position when the part is still in the mold. In a modular EOAT system, the tooling components can be easily moved on the profile for precise adjustment. The gate, runner, and sprue fill the molded part. The sprue plier secures this runner system when the part is ejected from the mold. After the components are positioned on the EOAT, compressed air and vacuum are plumbed to the grippers and vacuum cups.
is complete, verify that each socket head cap screw is securely tightened. Okay, so welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed those little videos inside this video. So what I wanted to show you is, okay, so this is what we call a QC. So this is a quick change connector. This will go on your robot. Um, so what it's, this helps you with is actually you can actually hook this up. One side will go to the end of arm and one side will go on the end of your robot. What this helps you with is actually you can put your air lines in here, your vacuum, your grippers, anything you want on this. And then every time you line this up, it always lines up the same way every single time. And then it locks into place. What these are called are called QCs. You can get them from EMI, ASS. You can get them from anybody. This is the new standard for quick changes, anything like that going forward. Now here's a robot that I put together that has the dovetail and everything on it. So you can see this part here will grab a part here, a part here, a part here, a part here. Then you got a runner in the very center of these parts here. So what, it, what happens is you've got the original dovetail that mounts to here. That's the old style. So if you look on the back of here, that's the old style there. This is the new style they're going to. So you get different sizes of these. These mount to the back of this. So they mount to the back of your dovetail right on there like that. This piece is no longer in existence. What you should do is you mount this to the robot. Then you can do quick changes. It helps you with making sure all your vacuum lines are in the same spot every single time on every end arm that you run. So, like I said, you got all these lines. Gripper 1, or I mean suction 1, suction 2, suction 3, suction 4. Gripper 1, gripper 2. That, that's what all this is for. Um, like I said, these things can get heavy. They make the aluminum profiles to where everything's a little lighter. But this is what they look like. Um, so... I just wanted to go over end arm tooling with you guys a little bit and show you exactly what um, end arms are, what EOT stands for. Um, they're they're huge in the industry. Like I said, you got EMI, ASS, you got SAS. Oops, excuse me, sorry. You have FIPA. You have a whole bunch of different companies out there that specialize in end arm tooling, and they'll actually they'll build the end arm tool for you if you want them to, or you can have them send them the part, they'll build the end arm, or you can have them send you the stuff and you build your own end arm. You cut everything down to the size that you need. Um, do it that way. Um, like I said, that I've dealt with many companies over the years. They will help you out. They will help um, get you to that next level in automation. Uh, that's the future. The thing is, is, you have it do all kinds of stuff for you. You can have it place a part for you in the mold, like over molding. If you have it insert molding, you can have it put screens in the mold. You can have it do cloth in the mold. You can have it do anything you want it to do. They have applications for it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, something a little different as far as going over something. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Till next time. Please like, share, and subscribe. Peace.